never even been in my life. And as the one that was with me, I was comforted. I'm going to come from 2 Samuel 12. And Father God, may the image you make of us in my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. And in your strength and your glory, and Lord, let us receive your word that you sent you this day. Amen. Amen. 2 Samuel 12. Starting at verse 15. <clears throat> you may be seated. And the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bore to David, and it became ill. David therefore pleaded with God for the child. And David fasted and went in and lay all night on the ground. So the elders of his house arose and went to him to raise him up from the dead. But he would not, nor did he eat food with them. Then on the seventh day it came to pass that the child died. And the servants of David were afraid to tell them that the child was dead. For they said, indeed, while the child was alive, we spoke to him, and he would not heed our voice. How can we tell him that the child is dead? He may do some harm. When David saw his servants were whispering, David perceived that the child was dead. Therefore, David said to his servants, is the child dead? And they answered, yes. And so the Bible says, in verse 20, David arose from the ground, washed and anointed himself and changed his clothes. And he went into the house of the Lord and worshiped. Then he went into his house and began to eat. And I will begin again. This is a hard topic because David, at this moment in his life, he had committed adultery. He had sinned for the Lord. And so God sent the prophet to him to reveal what was in David's heart that he was not aware of. And so as an act of punishment, God struck the child. But he did not strike David. And so it was really an act of mercy because God could have taken David. Um, and so you're looking at a moment where David has not yet learned to accept the will of God, even on this level. And sometimes when God is going to take a person from our life, we want them to stay. The Bible says he fasted and prayed for the child to remain alive. The Bible says he was on the ground. He was in a low place because what he loved was leaving. What he loved was not healthy. What he loved was not flourishing. And that happens not just in a funeral, not just with a loved one, but it happens with many things in our lives. Sometimes we have things in our lives that are not there. It can be a business. It can be a relationship. It can be an opportunity that gets sick. It can be our mind that gets sick. It can be our perception that gets sick. And some things must die because it's the part of God's will. And when we look at the life, the Bible says they wanted to bring him up off of the ground. And sometimes we can be at such a low place that nobody can get us. It doesn't matter how much we go to church, we're still on the ground. It doesn't matter if we go to a friend, we're still on the ground. Because some things take time to process. And sometimes we can't force a person to get up when they're not ready to get up. Sometimes we try to force people to be happy when they're not even ready to be happy. Sometimes we want people to do what we want them to do, but they're not ready to do what we want them to do. Sometimes we want them to eat, but they're not ready to eat. Because David's friends weren't losing the sleep. David was. And when we are surrounded by people that have not lost what we have lost, they will under, never understand the pain of being on the ground. And so we have to understand that sometimes I may not experience what you experience, but I can empathize with you being and we cannot rush the process of pain. 
David was longing for this child to live. He was fasting, he was praying, and watch this, getting no results. How many times have we fasted and prayed to God? And instead of it getting better, it got worse. That's how life is. That's how relationships, sometimes you want to even a relationship to God. But God says, this is not my will. And so God will let a thing die. But when it died, the first thing David did was the Bible says he got up. There is a time and season for everything on earth. There's a time to be on the ground, and there's a time to get up off the ground. But you got to make up in your mind, I'm not going to stay on the ground anymore. And so if we're going to move forward as a family, as a people, as a person, we have to know some things have to die. Not just the physical. Sometimes God wants things to die in us. He didn't get up until the child was dead. What is God asking? What is God trying to kill in you? Because sometimes we're stuck on the ground. Because what God is really asking to die in us, we won't release it. Are you willing to release it? Because some of us, and some of us have done this, we never let it die. And until you let it die, you will remain on the ground. And so the Bible says, Verse 24, that after David came to himself and he acknowledged the death of his son, he wasn't trying to manipulate the will of God. He accepted it. You can't manipulate God's desire. You can ask for God to change his mind. You can ask for better. You can ask God, help me. Help me to let this go. Help me to release this out of my heart. Help me to release this out of my mind. Help me to release this out of my soul or from my life. Because sometimes God will not change his will, but he wants to change us. To conform to his will. Because the beautiful part about this is this first son was actually illegal. And in Jewish culture, if you notice, his son was never given a name because they only gave it a name on the eighth day when they were circumcised. And so even the Bible says Jesus was circumcised on the eighth day and then he was named on that day. The Bible says the child died on the seventh day. So the child was born without an identity. He died without an identity. And so when we live outside of the will of God, we have no name situations. And some of us have come to church. We read the Bible. We have friendships with people that don't have a name because we stay out of the will of God. And if God is not in it, he won't put a name on it. The Bible says in Genesis, whenever God created something, he gave it what? A name. And if God's name ain't in it, it ain't his will. And so God wouldn't let the child live because God couldn't identify because God didn't sanction it. And so God sometimes asks us, let this go because I'm really not in it. This was his first son. And so the Bible says in verse 24, you got to let go of things that are not identified with God. That God says, I, I don't see nothing myself in this. But God gave him a second son. And this time it was legal. Verse 24, that then David comforted Bathsheba, his wife. Before she wasn't his wife. Now she his wife. And so God couldn't bless something that was cursed. And we can't ask God to bless something he's rejected. We can't ask God to help something live when something that is against his will and contrary, God can bless. And so God says, David, you got to marry her now. So it can be legal. 
And the Bible says he comforted Bathsheba, his wife, and they bore a child and named him Solomon. And the prophet also called him Jedidiah. Why is this so powerful? Because in losing one son that represented his sin, he gains another that represents salvation. One son is birthed out of sin, but he gives him another that represents redemption and salvation and the love of God. What do you mean? The name Solomon means peace or peaceful. It's where we get the word shalom, which not only means peace, but healthy. The first child wasn't healthy, but the second one was. When we are in alignment with God, God will breathe life into whatever we do. But sometimes God ain't breathing in stuff because it's illegal. God breathed peace into his son. And his second name was Jedediah, which means the Lord loves. It is the love of God that sustains life. The Bible says the Lord loved Solomon. It is the love of God that gives life. But sin takes life. But the love of God gives life. And the love of God will sustain you. The love of God will fill you. The love of God breathes into you. My God, I want everybody to take a breath right now. Just take a breath. Take a breath. Breathe in. Because that's exactly what God did in Genesis. He breathed into Adam life. That's what we want God wants for us, to breathe. He wants us to breathe in every area of our life. Breathe financially, breath spiritually, breath emotionally, breath in relationships. And if you can't breathe, it's probably not God. If you can't breathe, it ain't God. Because God never creates a thing without putting life in it. And God wants for this family, for us, from this very moment on, to know that we are loved and that we can move forward. And that the breath of God and the love of God will empower us and sustain us through the hardest times. But it's not until sometimes we lose what we love that God can give us better. God gave him a second son. God is a God of second chances. Does it matter what we've seen, how we've seen, what we've done? God is a God of mercy, for his mercy endures forever. How many of y'all know his mercy endures forever? How many of you know his mercy endures forever? Amen. His mercy endures forever. Does it matter how many times I've messed up? This is a man that has killed, how many of y'all killed somebody? Murder somebody. Intentionally. Not me, this one manslaughter. And yet God still forgave. So there's no sin that you can commit before God that God cannot forgive. All God asks is we confess our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us. And Bible says he cleanses us from all not some, but all unrighteousness. That means whatever unrighteousness you've done, God says, I can clean it up. I can purge it. But the Bible says we got we to say it out of our mouth. So by faith, the Bible says we are declared righteous. And with confession, salvation is given to us. Amen. God loves this family. God loves you. God loves us. Amen. Be comforted. Be empowered. In Jesus' name.